This happened in 2009. I was in my first year of high school, and I never had any creepy experiences before. Until one night, I went to visit my best friend and his girlfriend. We all live close to each other, so it was easy to walk over. Our new favorite game was playing hide-and-seek in the dark, sometimes called manhunt. We played it a lot during the day, so we all knew the best hiding spots. It got a bit boring because we played it so much. We didn't use flashlights or anything to help us. It made the game harder and more exciting. You could use the darkness and shadows to hide well. If you stayed hidden, you were safe. My best hiding spot was on one side of his house, where it was really dark. I used to hide flat behind some bushes, and it was great until they figured it out. Then it was my turn to look for them. Everyone was hidden now. Another fun thing we did was that you could move to a different hiding spot any time during the game, and if you were moving, the person who was looking for you had to tag you. The rules were pretty normal. It was my turn to find them at night for the first time, and I didn't know it would be so tough. I looked in the dark areas of the house first. I searched everywhere I could think of, but I couldn't find anyone. So I walked to the other side of the house toward their garage. I tried to be quiet, listening for any noise or movement. Then I saw something. There was a shadow that looked like a person moving across my friend's house. I got really excited and shouted, Isaac, I found you. I reached out to grab him, but the shadow moved in front of the open garage door, and there was nothing there. I called out to my friends, but they were far away. I told them what happened. We were all scared, to say the least. Then we all stopped again, frozen. Now, the boy figure was sitting on the neighbor's porch with his face in his hands. We decided to stop the game there. A really bad storm started coming. I said bye to my friend, and I went with his girlfriend to her house. She always said her house was haunted, and I believed her because it felt really creepy when I went inside. To make things scarier, she suggested we play with her Ouija board, which I'd never heard of before. I asked her, does it really work? She just said, do you want to find out? So being silly teenage girls, we decided to try it. This is how every scary movie begins, with Ouija boards. I didn't know the dangers until later. We sat next to each other with the board in the middle. We turned off the lights, and it was totally dark except for a small bit of light coming from her sister's bedroom. We started asking questions, but the board didn't move. I was about to give up when I looked at my friend and saw something odd down the hall. Her parents' door was closed, and they had a long mirror on it. In front of the mirror, I saw the same little boy from Hide and Seek, but now he was rocking back and forth with his head between his legs. I raised my hand and turned on the light, stopping the session. When I looked down next to me, I saw two big boot prints in the carpet. I didn't stay the night, and I never wanted to do that again. I kept hoping maybe it was just our shadows, or our eyes playing tricks on us in the dark. But I don't think so. We all still remember this event even though it happened ten years ago. Another creepy thing about the house I want to mention is on the ceiling above the staircase. It seemed like there were lots of hand streaks on the paint, going all the way up the stairs. Their parents tried to paint over them many times, but they kept coming back. They looked like they could have been made by a small child's handprint. I've got a couple of stories. Two are mine, and one belongs to my friend. Turns out, some of the things I've come across were like little demons. They weren't scary to me. I was more curious when I saw them. The first one, I think, was pretty chill. He looked strange. He said his name was Vernon. He stayed calm whenever I talked to him. He liked to stay in the darkest part of the room. Sometimes he'd follow behind me quietly. But he was nice, and I never felt scared. The second one I met, I don't remember much about. I love RPGs. In the dream, a white ball covered in eyes rolled out of my bag. All the eyes opened at once and stared at me. They blinked separately, 
I can't remember the rest of the dream. I think I just looked at it and went on with what I was doing. Then when I told my friend about it, he said it sounded like something bad and I should be careful. Now, about my friend's story. I've known Bibi for six years. We met in the army and lived together for a while. I trust him with my life. He's been through a lot, even before joining the army, since he was a kid. Like a shadow man following his mom. A ghostly old lady who used to live on their land tucking him in and doing chores. And some really weird, super realistic dreams about ancient places like old Sumeria. I found a story on Pinterest while browsing spirit and folklore stuff. It was about a demon called Stolas, who looked like a long-legged owl and had magic knowledge. I showed my friend the picture, and he said, Oh, it looks like a big barn owl. That's why he wanted the amethyst I had. I gave him a confused look and asked what he meant. He explained that when he was around 9 or 12 years old, he had a dream about a big barn owl with long legs who asked for something. I know you're going to mess up your life, and I plan to watch you die and study you. That's what the voice in the dream said. It happened where he usually kept his stone collection. He asked his brother if he had taken it, but his brother didn't care much about rocks and just brushed it off. It wasn't until I showed him that picture and told him what the thing really was that he understood. Turns out, a demon stole his amethyst. I used to live with my dad and stepmom. We had a big, beautiful dog, a German Shepherd. I didn't have an easy childhood, but this dog was always there for me. He was really clever and always stayed by my side. After some years, he died, but I still think about him a lot. Our house had a long hallway next to the living room. The hallway had a bedroom on the left side, then a bathroom, and my bedroom was at the very end. I lived there since I was two, so I was used to being alone. Actually, I usually liked being alone, so I felt really comfortable in my home. On this evening, my dad and stepmom were out, and I was on my bed watching TV with my dog beside me. The doors and windows were all shut and locked because it gets chilly at night, especially in the fall, winter, and spring here up north. My bedroom door was also closed and latched. My TV and lamp were on, but only one lamp in the living room was lit. No other electronics were on in the house. My dog and I were sitting on my bed when I noticed some movement. My dog perked up and looked towards my door at the same time I did. We both saw the door handle turning, like someone was trying to open the door from the other side. As the handle turned and the door opened, my dog suddenly became alert, looking very tense. The door creaked open slowly, all the way. I was shocked because I knew I was alone at home. Even though I saw the door handle turn and the door open, I couldn't see anything there that could have done it. All of a sudden, my dog leaped off the bed and dashed down the hallway faster than I could even react. As I stood up to check what was happening, I could hear his growls echoing from the living room. The growling grew louder as I approached. When I peeked into the living room, I saw him standing beneath the ceiling fan, right in the center of the room, staring upwards. Oh, I remember now. The fan wasn't even turned on. The only things that were on in the whole house were a lamp in the living room, my bedroom light, and the TV. My dog's black hair along his back was all standing up. He was frozen in place, his snout pointed upwards, growling fiercely. I stared at him for a moment, surprised because I had never seen him act like this before. I quietly called out to him, saying his name and asking what was wrong. As soon as I spoke, he turned around and came to me. He started making a soft, whimpering noise, nudging his head against me and gently pushing me back down the hall. As I stepped back, he pushed even harder. We both started running back down the hall towards my bedroom. When we reached my bedroom door, I turned to face it. Suddenly, the door slammed shut and locked behind us. I stood just a few feet away and watched as the lock turned by itself. I've heard and read that sometimes when a door is slammed really hard, 
It might accidentally lock itself because the parts inside can move around, but what made the door slam shut in the first place? My dog stood next to the door, not making any noise. He just stared at the handle, not moving at all. I called my dad, trying not to sound too worried. He said they were on their way and would be home in about 20 minutes. My dog stayed by the door, not budging, keeping himself between me and the door until my parents arrived home that night. I don't know what had the power to open my door, slam it shut, and lock it. I don't know what my dog saw, but I could sense that while he was nudging me away from the living room, he was trying to keep me safe. My family has a cabin by a small lake in New Hampshire. We visit it every summer. It's like our second home. There are other houses around the lake, but not many. The area around us is mostly forests and countryside. People usually come here for hunting if they own a lake house or just to enjoy the lake. About six years ago, late at night around midnight, me and my ex were in bed just chatting about random stuff. Our bedroom window was open, and it was situated halfway up the wall next to the bed. This meant it opened right near the bottom where our feet were. All of a sudden, we heard footsteps outside the window. It sent a chill down our spines as we tried to figure out who or what could be wandering around outside at that hour. The ground around my house is covered in pine needles that fell from the trees. Walking quietly on them is tough because they crunch underfoot but the footsteps we heard seemed like someone was trying hard not to make noise. They sounded close, but we told ourselves they were probably just some animal. After a couple of minutes, we heard the footsteps again, but now they sounded even closer. It seemed like whoever it was, they were right outside the window, still trying to be quiet. Me and my ex started feeling really scared. Then, to our shock, we looked down and saw a hand slowly coming through the window. We screamed loudly, waking up everyone in the house, including my parents from the next room. We explained what had happened, but my dad said it was probably just our minds playing tricks on us. It's strange because both me and my ex saw the same thing, so how could it be just in our heads? Even now, I still feel uncomfortable sleeping in that room. I always make sure to close the window tight before I go to bed. I didn't always search, but sometimes I'd check OkCupid to see if I got any interesting messages. Because I'm a woman, I got a lot of messages. One day, I saw a message from a guy nearby. It was okay, he asked about polyamory, which I'm fine discussing if someone is genuinely interested and respectful. We started talking. I didn't have any romantic feelings, but I thought we could be friends. After a few months of talking, he found me on Facebook. He asked if it was okay to add me, and I said yes. We kept talking and getting along. He seemed nice, just a bit strange, but that's okay, because I'm a bit strange too. We kept chatting on and off for the next two years. He started asking me to meet up and hang out after we exchanged birthday greetings and maintained a casual friendship. I thought about it, but back then I was really busy. I had my own business and was working around 70 hours a week. On top of that, I had to take care of my home and raise my child. Plus, I had to balance two partners and deal with a very demanding client who needed a lot of attention. So I told him no. He didn't like that answer. After that day, he stopped talking to me. It didn't bother me. Then, last week, I saw him in the news. I found out he broke into someone else's house and took everything. Thinking about it, I feel really lucky that I said no to him that day.